Scene four. Annabelle went upstairs. Annabelle stands in her bedroom. It is lit only by a stream of sunlight that cascades in through a window on her left. The room inside is calmly dim and carefully decorated. In front of Annabelle is a table, and on the table rests the newspaper article, a red ribbon trailing over an empty box, a needle and thread, and a written, folded letter signed with her name. Above the table is a long, oval mirror. She took a small pair of scissors from the drawer. She stands facing the mirror. She unbuttons the front of her dress. She takes a deep breath and cuts a palm-sized oval out of her skin, revealing a hole in her chest. The opening is mostly empty. Inside, held in place by a few veins and arteries that disappear into her flesh, is her heart. And she cut out her heart. She cut out her heart? Tracy is horrified. All the children sit in awed horror. Grandmother's face is very serious as she gazes at the children. She blinks once. Cut back to the story. I looked in. It was there, throbbing, pulsing, convulsing. The scissors pressed cold against my palm and I squeezed my hand hard. The blade bit into my skin and a thin trickle of blood spiralled gracefully down my wrist. It stung, but I thought it was beautiful. My hand trembled as I slipped it into the scissors' rings, thumb, then forefinger. The blades slid apart and light glinted on their perfect pointed tips. All was new and sharp and silver and shining, gleaming and cold. Cold, glistening steel. I panicked once, panicked and nearly gave up. I thought of the darkness of this house, the gloom so dense you could taste it. And then I looked out of the window at the kaleidoscope of grass and flowers and a stray butterfly. I thought of James. I thought of James under the cherry trees. I thought of us under the cherry trees.